let's do this. Happy Friday. Yay. Let's let's rank the ways animals are dying. Yeah. I understand it's it's going to be hard to rank them because of all this nuance, but I guess we got to try and take like a an overall look at the entire thing and and somehow come up with a ranking. Um, we'll see. I'm so, not like, sure. with the bot, I'm not sure I'm ever going to be comfortable ranking them properly. But I, I, I'll, I'll be comfortable like, doing that. I'll just, take, I'll just go with my. You can go away and take what I've said and decide for yourself. Like, where would you put them? I think. We're well, okay, okay. I mean, maybe like you can, you can like inform me, and I can give my intuitive yeah, feeling. Exactly, I guess yes. with your, with your help. Okay, so bolt gun stunning. It depends what we're talking about. Well, let's talk about cattle because I think this is going to be easier. Um, mm -hmm. Bolt gun stunning for cattle can be very effective. There is obviously, with all these systems, and I will say this, and this is why it's basically quite hard to necessarily quantify, but there is distress leading up to putting the animal in the pen where they can get them to a place of having the captive bolt um, shot. Mm. Now, when captive bolt goes well, great. Very, very quick slaughter. When captive bolt goes wrong, absolutely horrific, extreme torture. Um, and I'm probably going to say that for most of these, but I think particularly with the bolt stun, if you have to do that two or three times, if you can only imagine having your skull pulverized for two or three times, how horrific that must be. Uh, it's mm -hmm. pretty high up there. So I would say can be very moderate pain in the sense that it can be over very quickly, can be absolute torture beyond words. If, if the animal moves, if it doesn't go right, if they get the wrong spot. Mm hmm. Yeah, I guess there's like going to be several factors um, influencing whether it like works or doesn't, in including like how well trained the the member of staff is. But like, do do we have any idea of like what percentage it goes no, wrong with? No, I don't know necessarily. Um, mm. And each sort of house will have different things going wrong or going right. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, it does really rely on a really good slaughterman. Sort of person, we should say. If the captive bolt pistol works as it should, would it be painless? To a degree, yes, because you'd be just like a massive blow to the head that you'd never know anything about. It would just be over very, very quickly. Yeah. I guess, as you said, there's kind of like suffering leading up to it, getting to the point where yeah, the cow but that's is in the, the case with all of stunned. them, really, to be honest. But um, yeah, the bolt pistol of the cows. I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking moderate suffering. Yes. Okay. Um, electric pliers. Can you tell me a little bit about that? It is not, you know, if that goes wrong, they've had an electric shock. But that's not the same as having a captive bolt that's gone wrong where your head's been pulverized, but it's not mm. made you unconscious. Do you know what I mean? So electric pliers, when done well, they get electric shock, but the electric shock needs to be strong enough. So, okay, you get the electric shock, but the shock isn't good enough to keep you unconscious long enough for you to bleed out once they've cut your throat. Mm -hmm. But with the bolt gun, if you're, you know, you know, if your brain's dead, you're dead. Uh, and then there's no coming back from that. So there's just all these like nuances that go into all the ways that can go wrong and, and how bad it can mm. be. Moderate suffering. Yeah. Okay. Um, so CO2 gas chambers. Um, For pigs or chickens? What's it? Pigs. Let's talk about pigs. Slaughtering a pig with gas stunning CO2 is horrific. These pigs are have a very, very strong sense of smell to CO2 and it burns their entire mucosa in the way it just doesn't with chickens. So these pigs suffer horrendously in these systems. Now, why are they using these systems? Because before they were using electric stunning for pigs. Now, with electric stunning, to get them to the point of stunning, you have to put them into a race and they go in single file and pigs absolutely hate that. They want to be in a group. Mm -hmm. So with the gas chambers of CO2 for, for pigs, by putting them in a group, they're actually, they move, they're, they're less distressed. So up to the point of the slaughter, they're less distressed in a gas system, but at the point of slaughter, harrowing. Uh, right. But in a electrical system, up to the point of slaughter, quite distressed, you know, by themselves, single file, did not like it at all. Then they had the electrical system. Okay, the electric system hopefully works, doesn't always work. They may get electric shock that doesn't actually work at killing them. Or the electric shock they think has worked and then they come around conscious when they have the throat cut. I'm sorry, there's just so many nuances to all these things that I think sure. it's kind of hard to necessarily put it, but there are certain things 
gassing pigs should not happen. Right. CO2 gas for pigs should not happen. When I've talked about, talked to people to the industry, in the industry, um, they've kind of told me like, this is actually humane. They say like the pigs just fall asleep and they know nothing <laughs> about it. But whenever I look on YouTube, whenever I look on the internet, all I find is the pigs like gasping in desperation and screaming. Oh yeah, no, no, um, that's just not true. I mean, I would say intense, I would say strong suffering to intense torture. And with CO2 gas chambers, like what about the, t- the time that they're, they're suffering? How long, do, like, I know there's probably gonna be suffering before they're into the chamber, but let's say when's the, when they're in the chamber, once the gas comes through, uh, what's like the range of how long it takes? I mean, it varies, I think. 10, 20, 30, 40 minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah var- variable, depending on this type of system and how they're running it. Um, I'm thinking that this has, like you said, this has to be strong suffering or intense torture. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I, I, the intensity seems like incredibly high to me. Yeah, we're going but intense let's, torture. You're going intense. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's intense in terms of like, it seems like really, really bad. But in terms of the length, it's short. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, shit. What am I gonna do? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say intense torture. I, I feel like that's probably reasonable. If in doubt, go high. <laughs> and, okay, for chickens then? Uh, I'd say moderate suffering. Mm-hmm. Um, any idea on like what they could be experiencing, what it could feel like? Well, I mean, they have about 10 seconds of distress where they're either gasping for air. So, you know, they've got that innate thing where you're like, I haven't got enough oxygen. Um, and there may be discomfort from the CO2. But if, if it's a system mm-hmm. that's biphasic, so a low level and then high, not one of these ones that does gradual. So I'm just talking about biphasic here, to be very clear. Then I would go moderate suffering. Are there a- any alternatives that are in practice that are better than gas chambers for chickens? Uh, yeah, there's something called LAPS, low atmospheric pressure stunning that's been uh, evolved that is now legal. Um, and that doesn't use... it. It's... It, it's just like literally what it says, low atmospheric pressure. Um, and so it's equivalent of like a, a going up to high altitude and you get that altitude where eventually you sort of stop breathing. When they do it with humans, they actually have a euphoric feeling. So they've actually, there's actually, you can watch it on YouTube, a dude that's like, they go, low, go to low atmospheric pressure and they say, press the button when you want to stop because it's a discomfort but he's so euphoric and high off it that he doesn't want to press the button so they have to press the button for him <laughs> versus right. um uh but the problem we have is euphoria and dysphoria doesn't look very different in birds <laughs> sometimes in people either hmm. um and so we don't really know if that's euphoria or dysphoria that they're experienced for this sort of window of 10 15 seconds um so again i would put moderate suffering for the lapse but okay. i would say that it's probably better than CO2, but we're not really sure. Okay, what about um, the maceration of male chicks? Because this is something that like sounds terrible. I feel like when, as an activist, when you talk about people, when you say, yeah, male chicks are being ground up alive, mm. it's like probably one of the most like shocking standard practices that we have. Um, and it looks shocking as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I actually don't know like how intense that suffering would be because some people suggest it's kind of like an instant death. Yeah. So it is instant death if the macerator is used appropriately and is kept uh, well functioning. And then obviously they go in and it should be over in a matter of seconds. Uh, That's not really what typically happens that, you know, machines will become blunter. It will take longer. Maybe a foot goes in first. Maybe a wing goes in Mm. first. Yeah, it's uh, I would go with I mean, it honestly, they say it's better than gas stunning because it should be more instantaneous. And I honestly, if it was instantaneous, I wouldn't be saying this, but I just don't see that that's what happens knowing how the industry works and how money works and keeping something razor sharp is very difficult that I would probably go with uh, intense torture again. Okay, intense torture. That's another one where it seems like the grinding up of animals alive, it's like how... It's kind of beggar's belief that this is still happening, and it feels mm. like the public would have a strong reaction to it. That, that you'd think it would be kind of easy to stop. Yeah. Uh, am I right in saying that they are talking? Like there is some work being done in terms of um, making it so that they only breed yes. the the they, females, so that the males don't exist in the first place. They won't only breed them; they will be born in shells, but they can sex them at a very young age, so before they become like a fully grown chick in the shell, uh, which will allow them to probably macerate them 
at sort of nine, 11 days of age in the shell. Um, oh, are they sentient then at that point? Debate. Debate is there. Uh, if there is a level because of Because sentient... if, if they were, that would be the same thing, put in a well, shell. No, that doesn't make it any better. Well, I mean, <laughs> you could argue what is cognition versus suffering because there's a level, a degree of awareness that causes suffering, right? So if there's... We could go into so much detail about what is consciousness. But in theory, they should not have much, if any, level degree of consciousness at that point. Right. Certainly less than if... Oh, if they were older. Way yeah. less, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. So where would that go on the on the scale if if they were like still in the shells? I mean, I'm gonna hope for painless. Um if we're talking like mm. nine to eleven days of age. Obviously it's if it's close to hatching, then it's not the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about slaughter without stunning. So um there's like religious slaughter, like halal. Mm -hmm. I believe that two thirds of halal slaughter in the UK is actually they're actually stunned before before the knife. Um, that for chicken, but nonetheless, yes. sorry for chicken. Yes, I think that's correct. Yeah. Okay, and like f for cows, uh, depending where they come from. Um, so in some countries, yes. In other countries, not so much. Um, here, I, I actually don't. I don't remember the stats to be honest for cows and sheep, mm -hmm. sheep right now. The reality um, is. Stunning, when done well, is much better than having your throat cut and experiencing the distress of being hung upside down while you're struggling mm. to breathe the blood in your throat. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen with other animals that have also been stunned. In fact, you could say we torture them first and then we cut their throats. Right. Um, yeah. So... Interestingly, like when I when I've talked to um, some Muslims about this issue, they have argued that halal halal slaughter is actually more ethical. Um, and they don't see like the, the stunning of the animals as being ethical at all. Is that something you've come across? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I would just say that it's a very sensitive area of the throat. And when you cut through that mm. area and you cut through those nerves, it's going to be extraordinarily painful. And it would be, you know, intense torture. But if, if they cut them correctly, if they use a very sharp knife, those animals could bleed out relatively quickly and it will be over. Right. Yeah, so intense pain, but perhaps quite quite quickly. Hopefully, so I mean, it, I think it's mate... twenty seconds. There, the, there's a what's it, Willis circle in the cow's brain, which makes them last a bit longer. There's like blood running through the brain in a way that makes them stay um, more conscious longer. Whereas I think, oh god, this is harking back to memory that I don't necessarily have. That's very good, but um, sure, yeah, they is it last quicker than a gas chamber. Uh, well, you don't gas cattle so but like compare but like because i'm thinking about how i'm ranking these and i have pigs as intense torture and i'm wondering if we should be stunning the... animals we should be stunning animals full stop sure 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 uh, but even so like i'm wondering if this is like less pain causing less suffering than the, than the gas chamber like so it's either strong suffering or intense torture and i'm just trying to choose between them <laughs> I mean, I think cutting someone's throat is torturing them, isn't it? Okay. Live shackle slaughter. Mm, intense torture. I guess for the, the chicken to abort live, I, I'd probably... Torture beyond words, I'd probably yeah. lean towards saying torture beyond words. Yeah, I mean, are you going but... for the vast majority or are you going for what yeah. is possible at the worst case scenario? Because at the worst case I mean, scenario, I, think... I could do torture beyond words for all of these, to be honest. For all of them, right, 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 yeah. Um... I guess let's let's assume that it we're talk, we're talking about like a chicken who isn't who is actually stunned properly as it would suggest strong um, suffering. So they've got the strong suffering. Mm -hmm. um, so that's from things like I mean we've talked about it in another video, yes. but maybe you could give like a little brief overview for this one as well. Like so the the strong suffering comes from being hung upside down. So they it's painful for the legs. They have painful leg conditions anyway. A lot of these birds because they've grown so quickly. Uh, and that's coupled with the fact they don't have a diaphragm, so the insides crush their lungs. That's very distressing. They're hung upside down. It's very distressing. They wing flap. They, If they don't enter the water bath correctly, they may get a pre-electric stun as their wing gets in there first. Um, then if they enter the water bath correctly, they will get a stun, but it may not be effective. Uh, it may only last a second. It may last a couple of seconds and they come conscious when their throats are cut, which is happens after the water bath's done. And then as we just alluded to, there's a two or 3% that can actually go to the scalding tank where the feathers are removed. And, um, 
and and that's where they are still conscious and that's horrific but mm. i would say that if the electric stun's done properly it's still strong suffering moderate to strong suffering if the electric stun's not done properly i'd say intense torture if the bird ends up going to the scolding tanks then i would put torture beyond words sure um and lobsters being bored alive it seems intuitive that this done would be torture, torture beyond, beyond words, words yeah <laughs> Um, and we've seen the science for that so yeah you've you seen know. the science there's sci there's the clear waters. science to show that the the lobsters and uh, um, others uh, crabs and things move away from pain painful stimuli and that they find extreme heat being a pain which is no surprise these animals have to live in this water they're not going to go and boil themselves alive by choice so innately they're going to have systems that stop them going in boiling water so when we put them in boiling water and they can't escape that must be torture beyond words and do do we have any idea as to how long they stay conscious for once they're in? I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, no fair. Um, I'm sure you could look it up, but I just don't know off the top of my head. I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah, me neither. I, I guess, like, I mean, even if it was, even if it was five seconds, that would be like the longest. I don't think it's five seconds, sadly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even if it was, that would mm. that would probably go to an intense torture or torture beyond words. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't. It's hard to think of something worse. From, like, it seems really, really terrible. Um, but like since so since the the government have now recognised uh, crustaceans as being sentient, mm. are you hopeful that uh, in the near future we could be seeing like a ban on this practice in the UK at least? Got to hope, yeah, definitely that would be good. Do you yeah. think it's realistic? That, like, say, in the next uh, five years? I think it should be realistic, but we're still pushing for like the basicness of uh, slaughter slaughter um, regulations for farmed fish, and all other farmed animals mm. have that. So. Yes, I'm optimistic. This is a big step in the right direction, recognizing them as sentient. But we have other animals that we recognize as sentient for a long time and they still don't get any protection. So we really need to push hard for this and make sure that happens. Yeah. Um, like it seems to me that like for, for the slaughter of most animals, we are like very, very much disconnected and not seeing it. With like lobsters, it seems that the the process is like less disconnected from the public because like a lot of people who eat lobsters will like boil them themselves mm. or like go to a restaurant where they pick out which lobster um they want to eat mm. but i guess because i mean i guess people care less because it's harder to see that they're suffering and just because they're more different to us i suppose than like a mammal if you don't hear the screams people don't think it's the same pain but it is they just can't scream right yeah same, same with fish i guess mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Um, and so I'm asking like really like difficult questions here, I know, but like, do you have any idea of like the scale of like lobsters being boiled alive by any chance? I mean, all of them basically, isn't it? But do you know how many there are then? No, I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's not all because they put, they chill them on ice sometimes and they die that way as well. But I, I, I don't know the stats on this. Crustacean Compassion uh, does uh, have really good stats on this and they're lobbying for this to be banned. So I recommend people look there. Mm. Um, and if we were assuming that people were still going to eat lobsters, but we banned the boiling alive, is it like an alternative that you think is causing significantly less suffering? There is a stunning, there's a the cruster stun it's called, um, that stuns the lobsters. So as same with all these other animals, you can stun them before you kill them. And that way it would be much more humane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's let's go to fish. Oh, by the way, I had like this here. You probably don't recognize what this picture is. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a pod on the grass and um i put this here because we didn't have anything that i thought was going to go into the painless section mm. and i thought we should have something there and this is because i'm actually making a video at the moment about assisted dying okay. <laughs> and um there's this pod that that like this guy's designed that might become available in switzerland in the future where okay. and i'm going off on a complete tangent here right. but it kills humans um painlessly wow. in like 10 seconds um, wow yeah, so like I'm, I, I'm also th I'm also like I guess an advocate of like assisted dying. I think that people who are like terminally ill course, yeah. and have like a lot of suffering ahead of them should be allowed to die peacefully if they want to. But actually, in the UK, it's it's illegal. Currently, hopefully that will change. Yeah, yeah. Even though eighty four percent of the British public are in favour of yeah, assisted yeah. dying, so uh, and that just seems like a very uh, obvious injustice that like we're forcing people to undergo torture at the end of their life yeah, when sure. we don't have to um so yeah. yeah now we have a painless thing there as well so that's good mm, interesting <laughs> um fish yeah 
So let's t- let's talk about trawlers. Mm-hmm. Horrendous. Do you have any idea as to like what's what kind of experiences fish are going through with trawling? Well, fish don't like to touch each other, so they'll be very distressed from that alone. As soon as they touch another fish, they want to be getting away. And then if they're trawling, they're coming from the depths of the ocean. They have swim bladders, bladders that help with the buoyancy and things. That explodes because the change in pressure is so quick. So that must be excruciating. Mm-hmm. And then they're all on top of each other. So they are either crushed to death or if they make it and they're not crushed to death, as they come out of the water, they begin to suffocate, obviously, because they can't breathe. And then they go into these wells. They're either suffocated or crushed. And if they survive that and they're not suffocated or crushed, they then maybe go on to ice or go into CO2 or some other form of torture that will kill the fish. Um, so I would say mm-hmm. torture beyond worlds for all of fish, really. There is... It, there is no other way to describe it. I think that most, I could be wrong, but I think that most of the fish who are dying are kind of just like left on board to suffocate. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've heard that that can take like a, a very, very long time. to. We actually don't actually happen. know. And if we don't know because they actually did a test thinking, we'll test it for two hours and just see how long. And at two hours, mm. they still had a, they were still alive. Very faint heartbeat, still alive. So. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. So that seems awful yeah um, and i've heard that if they put them on ice that actually pro- can prolong it mm-hmm. yeah yeah um so like that's and i also like the, sc- the scale of this one as well is no is it's obscene. untenable how, how many yeah yeah um trillions okay so if like the, the average fish then we're, we're probably going to say torture beyond words yeah um and i guess like one of the difficulties here i've heard that it's kind of very difficult to create welfare reform for fish mm-hmm. because like there's so much money and like it would, it would require like drastic changes to like the way these animals are being killed mm-hmm. um which is like very hard to to implement yeah um but like so some alternatives like the well i've, I've seen something online where they had like this suction thing that was like sucking the fish have, mm-hmm. you, have you seen that yeah so they set them out to electric electrically stun them is that what you're talking about so they go through a um, stunner they go. They get sucked into this kind of chamber. If you imagine, it goes from here. They come in from here to here, and this is electrocuted. So they get electric shock as they go in here, and then they come out electric, ele- uh, electric, stunned. Sorry, electrically stunned. Mm-hmm. And when they come out, and then that's when they get their gills um, and things cut. So that's one way. Or the other way is they come out of the water and they get onto a like a conveyor, and the fish lies here on the conveyor, and they get electric shock that way. And so they're shocked here, they come round and then they have their gills and things cut. So both of those methods are, could be better. I think probably the ones where they're sucked into the water and get electric shock is probably better. I don't want to like put my <laughs> put myself out there and say that's sure. definite, but I would imagine they don't then ever exit the water until they're unconscious. There's less handling. And so that's probably right. less distressing. The other thing with the electric sh- shocks in... On, on a platform like that is that they will they it doesn't always work and I think it's probably more likely to work going through the cylinder in the water than it is when they're going on dry having dry stunning so mm. I would say moderate suffering probably for the electric water stunning it could be I'm I, there'll be some form of distress being sucked for a starters there's going to be suffering there so yeah moderate suffering for that and then probably moderate to strong suffering for electric stunning hopefully moderate if done well strong mm-hmm. suffering if not so much cool i, I have this image for like i, I typed in like fish stunning and, and this image came up but i don't know if it, it, it doesn't seem like, it's probably not like a legit image of what i'm trying to say but like yeah for electrical stunning then i'll put it on on moderate suffering um like with farmed fish um do, do you know about like how most farm fish are dying oh this is how they are dying this is what i'm talking about sorry ah, so if we're talking about stunning. um well i'm talking about salmon and trout um in the uk <sighs> let's be clear but what we've seen and when animal quality and other organizations have um one kind and others i think compassion as well have shown slaughter it uh, and Viva, sorry, Viva did a campaign. Apologies. Um, they have shown that these these fish are simply not being stunned properly. They're just not being stunned properly when they're going through the electric stunner. So that is why we at THL and other organisations are pushing for regulations, the same regulations that other farmed animals get, to have parameters for these fish when they're being stunned. So there's more chance of them being stunned effectively, but also that people are trained and know how to do it, and that's so important. Mm-hmm. So 
yeah, it's moderate suffering if it's, you know, we're talking about when it goes well, but you know, if it doesn't go well, we're talking about intense torture. But as I said at the beginning, it's intense torture for all of them if it doesn't go well. So, and this is the problem with killing animals. There's just no way of knowing that that animal on your plate has not suffered or been tortured. There's just no way of knowing. Right, right, yeah. Um, I, I guess um, we were talking here about slaughter methods um, and it seems like the way animals are dying tends to be like a lot more horrific than the public would imagine. Um, like on the other hand, we've got um, like the, the actual farming conditions. And I'm wondering when it comes to getting policy change or getting welfare reform f with the companies, do you think it's like easier to to improve like the slaughter methods or do you think it's easier to improve like the actual farming conditions? Oh, it's all <laughs> relatively tricky in the sense that the industry don't want to make changes because that might, Right. I mean, they have to learn, you know, firstly, people don't like change, right? We know this. People are very, always very hesitant to change. If they aren't hesitant to change, you know, if there's monetary implications, they may be, it might, may have be a reason for them not to change as well. So there's always this pushback. And I think the challenge we have on farm is that the numbers are so vast. We're farming too many animals. We have to reduce the number of animals we're farming. That has to happen in terms of slaughter conditions. It's a mass on investment that they have to make. Um, you know, it costs a lot of money to change those systems. People need to learn how to use them, but you need to learn how to use a farming system. At the end of the day, factory farming in all its guise is like from the slaughter, from the, the it's all causing extreme suffering. And mm. making these changes is going against the grain of an industry that wants to make money. They're in it to make money. They're not in it because they love the two chickens that are in their backyard. You know, I'm there is there's no way of saying that you can have 30,000 chickens in your shed and say that you care about each of those individually and you know those chickens you simply don't um and then when they go to slaughter you don't see them you know those producers may even say goodbye to them at the door but they're never in that slaughterhouse they're never seeing that mm. them actually going through it and each is an individual and each is suffering in a different way okay so thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video you would probably find my podcast episode with vicky quite interesting as well uh, you can find it on my second channel which is called humane hangouts you can also find it by searching for humane hangouts on spotify or any other podcast streaming platforms with that said thanks for watching and i will see you very soon with another video